Enable. Welcome to season 6 of NSC Finviz, powered by CNBC TV 18, the show that spreads financial literacy across corporate campuses in India. I'm your host, Mridhu Bhandari. In season 6 of the show, we are exploring the theme, Invest in Yourself, Your Path to Prosperity. And today we are at the Philips India campus in Gurugram in the National Capital Region. A set of financial experts is here to spread financial literacy and share valuable money management advice. First up, let's get to know a little bit more about Philips India, a company that's a leading player in the spaces of health technology and personal health. Founded in India in 1930, Philips is a leading health technology company. Through the years, Philips has focused on improving people's health and enabling better outcomes across the health continuum from healthy living and prevention to diagnosis, treatment and home care. With its advanced technology and deep clinical and consumer insights to deliver integrated solutions, Philips continues to bring the Indian consumer new and innovative products backed by the latest technology and bearing the renowned Philips stamp of quality. Today, NSC Finviz with its theme, Invest in Yourself, Your Path to Prosperity, engaged with the techies of Philips in Gurukram to understand their notions on financial planning and educate them to plan their finances better. Financial literacy is a very nice word, but uh, today every professional who is young or old has to be very, very clear about what is the future because uh, gone are those days when social security or the family security was there. You got to provide your own security as the airline when, when you get into a plane where they say that you got to take care of yourself like this, you got to take care of yourself. So understanding what is it in store for you, not only for the current uh, perspective, it's also for the long term perspective. What is it which is you need and how to lead a good life because if you don't have finances, nobody is going to take care of you. So understanding what is it right now and what are the products which are available right now, how, what do I invest, how do I invest, where do I invest and also a risk-free investment is very important for the young professionals because they are in a consumption mode right now which is very good for the economy but also investment takes care of them in the future. Financial literacy as for me is to be on top of information and all knowledge which you have. So you can say to take an informed decision in terms of what you want to buy or invest in an order so that you can have a much more higher returns and risk free returns to be so. Financial literacy for me is essentially the ability to make the right decisions regarding my own uh, personal finances. Where to invest, how much to invest, do I invest in equity, do I invest in insurance or uh, a retirement corpus. That's what financial literacy is, is for me. I think it's a very important thing, uh, especially with a lot of millennials joining the workforce now. Uh, and with so many options out there and so much access to financials in using technology and the digital space, I think it can get a bit confusing as well. Uh, so even though there are options, it's a little more confusing. So it's important to have the right foundational understanding of what finances really mean and the impact it can have in the long term. So I think it's critical to every employee to know what exactly and how to plan their careers and finances. Hello and welcome to Season 6 of NSC Finviz, powered by CNBC TV 18. Today we are coming to you from the Philips India campus in Gurugram in the National Capital Region. And our financial experts are here to engage with the employees and share some valuable money mantras. Let's welcome the experts on the show today. Harsh Vardhan Rungta, Certified Financial Planner at Rungta Securities. And Tanvir Alam, CEO of FinCard. Welcome gentlemen. On season six of the series, we are exploring the theme, invest in yourself, your path to prosperity. Harsh, to begin with, how would you tell people to identify prosperity goals? And, uh, you know, in terms of time, what are short-term, medium-term and long-term prosperity goals? Uh, so, well, you know, when you talk about prosperity, when you talk about success, these are all subjective terms. I mean, what would mean success to some one person A may not mean to person B. I think there is one, you know, state of mind that we can come to in which we can say that we've achieved that kind of uh, success that we wish. So the first element would be that when you come to a level and you're, you know, when you come to a level where you can spend without feeling guilty. So uh, what is the meaning of spending without guilt is 
if you've allocated money towards all your goals, okay, you've all, we all have requirements, financial requirements in our lives. So if we are able to articulate them, identify what exactly we want to save for, we also quantify, you know, how much do we need, need to save for that particular goal. So if I'm talking about retirement, so we invariably come across people and who want to save for retirement. And when we get into the details saying, how much do you need at the time of retirement? There is a clear no answer. You know? So right. the idea is you will need to identify your goals. You will need to quantify your goals as well. So Tanvir, what according to you would those two, three essentials be that Harsh just spoke about that, that you first put into place before you achieve your guilt-free spending state of mind? Okay, in fact, uh, I started talking about the psychology of money, okay. It's very simple. In fact, if you're earning, say, 100 rupees, okay, and age-old, our parents have asked us to save. If you're saving 25 rupees, and the rest, you can very well divide between your household expenses and your lifestyle expenditure. If you are actually earning 100 rupees, if you're saving aside first for your uh, goals, long-term goal could be children's education, retirement, their marriages, so you bucket them into short, medium term, long goals. And one of the most important thing that you should focus on is do not ignore retirement as a goal. Okay, so let's also talk about the routes to prosperity. Now, there are many avenues available out there for a first time investor or somebody who's not been very long in the investing scene. What is the best route to prosperity? You have uh, various options available and a first time investor is quite overwhelmed. So essentially coming to basics. So what do you do as a basic? The first is, as I've always mentioned, you please jot down what do you want to save for. So unless you have an objective in front of you, you will not be motivated towards taking action towards it, you know, a, a constructive action towards it. Mm. It's only going to be a thought until then. Right. So once you note down what you want to do, why you want to invest, and for what is your objective, then you put a timeline to this. How long is the time period that you can wait for? Then the third element arises is that you, uh, you choose the appropriate product for that timeline. Right. So for instance, if you are going to save for a period of say 20 years, the product that you select is going to be different. Hmm. And if you're going to say, invest for, a, uh, for something that is required after two months, you're going to invest in a different product altogether. Right. So if you are clear from, in, from your side with these three, four parameters, then it is easy for anyone to advise you on that. All right. On that note, we are going to head into a short break right now. On the other side, our conversation will continue with the Philips India employees right here on Season 6 of NSC Finvis, powered by CNBC TV 18. Do remember to log on to our website, nscfinvis.com, for more valuable insights. Also, feel free to reach out to us on social media. Our handle on Facebook and Twitter is NSC Finvis. We'll be right back. Welcome back to NSC Finviz, powered by CNBC TV 18. Today we are coming to you from the Philips India campus in the National Capital Region. And our core topic for discussion in this segment is mutual funds as a way to prosperity. Should one invest in active or passive funds? So let me begin with the very basic question of what is the difference between active and passive funds, Tanvir? When you're investing in a broad sensex or an index, okay, that's... That investing can be done by buying a passive mutual fund or an index fund. That's called passive investing. Basically, you're trying to follow with the market. You're not depending on any fund manager's capabilities. Okay? So you're not trying to choose who's going to be the next hero. So whereas active management is you choose a fund where the fund manager's bets on his capabilities of outperforming the broad index or a market. That's called an active management fund. Okay, so we're talking about mutual funds as a route to prosperity. Uh, conventionally, people invested in FDs or public provident funds or government schemes because, you know, that feature of safety and security was really, really high and that's still very important to people. So how safe are mutual fund investments really and how would you compare these new age products with conventional products? So when we talk about money, we are saving money, we are, we are foregoing the benefit of spending it today for a future requirement, correct? So we are not spending it today, but we intend to spend it in future. So it is essential that we retain the purchasing power of money. If you want to create wealth over a longer period of time, then you have to select equity as an asset class. Hmm. 
we may not be proficient enough to manage equities or understand equities. But does it mean that we will not invest in equities? If I know this is the best way to go about it, but I don't know how to do it, I will take external help. Right. That external help in that sense is mutual funds. Right. So mutual funds are those, uh, that, those agencies that help you uh, with your investing, using their expertise for long term. But there is a whole uh, range of mutual funds available as well. There are various classes, categories of mutual funds as well. So, uh, you know, young investors are often very confused. There are a number of fund houses uh, trying to lure them. There are uh, a number of schemes available. How do you decide on a good fund and how should you decide on your debt equity ratio? Okay. What you could do basically is like, no, let me use an anecdote which will help you to understand and differentiate the product. So, for example, from Gurgaon, from this sector 25 DL is this. Do you have to go to, say, uh, a Sona road? How would you go? A car or a cab or a cycle, a bike, whatever it is, right? That's a short-term goal. If you have to travel from here to, say, Aligarh, how will you go? By a train, a car, or a bus, right? From here to Bombay? Flight mostly or train, right? From here to London? Flight. So all your long-term goals are like your flight to London. You have to have an equity fund. From here to Bombay, you're limiting to flight and train. It's a balanced fund. Okay. From here to, say, a Aligarh is like a fixed income or a bond fund, which is about two to three year time horizon you can look at. For anything which is lower than that, which is called liquid fund, you can park even for a day. And some people give you even instant redemption within half an hour, your account will get credited. Right. Okay, so let's uh, take up the first question from uh, a Philips India employee in this segment. Uh, Isha, who's the brand deputy manager in media planning and buying, uh, asks, why are passive mutual funds outperforming active, uh, actively managed ones? And what's the current benchmark that we should look at? There is always a process of information dissemination. So while there is a development somewhere, who gets to know that development first? Who gets access to that news first and reacts to that news? So as we develop as a market, as you become more matured as a market, you will feel that information, you will find that information dissemination is becoming far more smoother and faster. It is no more a privilege or access to only a few. So once this, you know, once we go towards the developed market uh, scenario where, you know, markets are matured and information dissemination is almost real time, you will find the situation that actively fund managers will find it difficult going further to beat the benchmarks. So in that context, you know, passively managed funds have become a very, very integral part of investors portfolio. Right. Okay. And that brings me to the next question. This is from Varun Gupta, senior manager of finance uh, at Philips India. And the question is, how is the investment in international funds and ETFs? Can we do SIPs in those funds uh, for long term returns? Yeah, there are funds available for you to participate in the international market and uh, uh, they are called feeder funds. They, you can participate, invest in here and they in turn invest outside India. Okay, That is possible. Now, I understand where this the thought is coming from because last few years S&P 500 has done very well and a lot of people are getting uh, carried away with that. But you have to be very careful in terms when you're p picking an international funds. You should be doing your homework before you actually jump into that. Uh, because uh, that rally may uh, get a breather going forward. So you have to be very careful in that scenario. Okay, on that note, let's head into another quick break right now. On the other side, our financial experts will, of course, be answering all the queries of the Philips India employees right here on CNBC TV 18. Welcome back to Season 6 of NSC Finviz, powered by CNBC TV 18. Today we are coming to you from the Philips India campus in Gurugram in the National Capital Region. And in this segment, our financial experts will be taking questions from the employees. So employees of Philips India, please raise your hands. Oops, there are already lots of hands up. <laughs> Can we have the mics, please? My question to you, when is the right time to exit out of mutual fund? May Not the mutual fund, any fund. If you've planned to invest for, say, 15 years, for example... We've discussed this that if you're, if you're just about to achieve your goals two or three years prior to that, you have to start moving out of equities because you don't want a last moment market volatility to affect your goal. Suppose you've invested till 14 years and suddenly when you require the money, the markets have gone down. 
Okay, so that is the time you don't really want to affect the portfolio of yours. So you start insulating your portfolio from volatility about two to three years prior to your requirements. More importantly, what your question is targeted, it seems like it's like if the markets are at its peak, should you at that point exit or wait for some more time? So the question is, why, when do you know the markets have peaked? What is the peak? What is the higher level? So today, if you bought something at say 50 rupees, a, a stock which is 50 rupees worth in price, has gone up to say 80 rupees in, in about three days, if that has happened. You believe you've done a very smart thing, a 50 rupees has become 80 rupees, you are, you are a genius, and you exited, you sold it at that point in time. What stops it from becoming an 800 rupees stock after five years? So the question is, if you're investing with conviction, with clear understanding into a particular product, don't need to remove it unless there is a major crisis otherwise. Next question, please. So, uh, my question is, after this ILFS saga, how uh, safe is it to invest in the credit risk fund, number one? And secondly, in terms of the debt fund, uh, how safe is it in terms of both the return and the risk? Okay. See, credit risk fund, when I say credit risk fund, it always came with a degree of risk. Okay? So if your YTM of the portfolio okay, is high, you are that there's no free lunch available. Every degree of extra returns come with that degree of risk. At each point of time, you have to decide ki what is the trade-off, what is the risk I'm taking vis-a-vis -vis the extra return that I'm getting on it. Okay? And it is based on your risk appetite whether you want to take that risk or not. But having said that, yes, if you're investing in a very good, highly graded paper, then the reason to worry should be very less. Okay, we have time for one last question. My question to the panel is that what advice do you offer to find a good financial advisor? Uh, what are the questions do you think we should ask uh, that we look in for a good financial advisor? And in case, uh, you know, if uh, there are any red alerts, if I would say, that you indicates, uh, you know, that we should shift our financial advisors, what is that? If you ask very simple questions, you invest, you're advising me, how are you earning your money? Very simple questions. So if he tells you, okay, this is how I'm going to earn money and how transparent the person is, one, is about first thing. Secondly, how in a simple manner he explains the, not only the benefits, but the risk of the product. Okay. Very, very important. See, each and every investment product will carry some degree of risk. If he says, you know, sure, sure, I say 100% of them, then run away. Okay, that's okay. Now, apart from that, I use the acronym called ACE, A-C-E. Okay, one is availability. Two is competence, C. Okay, it's competence. It's capable of actually managing your money because your money is hard-earned. So what qualification does he have? What kind of expertise does he have? How old? Has he gone through a number of cycles? Third is ethical okay, advice. So if he's giving you a very honest ethical advice without keeping his interest in mind. And these are three parameters which will help you to filter out the men from the boys. Great uh, note to end this show on then. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you, Philips India, for having us here on your campus today. With that, it's a wrap of this episode of NSC Finvis, powered by CNBC TV 18. We'll be back next time with more financial insights from another campus in corporate India. Thanks for joining us today. Goodbye. I think it was a very insightful uh, session. I think it was a very interactive session in the sense that there were a lot of questions asked, a lot of answers given. And I think it does clear a lot of uh, uh, issues or the ambiguities which uh, we might have in terms of our financial education. Yeah. The session provided very valuable insights into investing right by using different tools, uh, keeping the risk appetite in mind to build prosperity. And uh, it cre clearly reinforced in me uh, the importance of financial planning and uh, the need to turn savings into investments. Definitely I would uh, make some changes to the current investment plan. So I, you know, currently I just had knowledge about SIPs and ELSS, so to say. But there are so many other investment plans with respect to U uh, ULIPs and, you know, uh, fixed deposits and stuff. So I did not have much insights into that. So definitely I will uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, segregate my investments according to different investment plans that were discussed today. Innovate. Enable.